Right, today's job. I'm going to make a uh, sandblaster out of these two gas balls. I've seen how people made them before and yeah, I'm going to make one, but I'm going to make it a little bit different and I'm going to make it a little bit better. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a step by step, uh, whatever, on how to do it. I'm going to try and keep it as DIY friendly as possible. I know I've got some bits here from my blasters and just some spare pipes and stuff. But I'm probably going to put a link to all stuff that you can buy. Like, I ain't got another one of these tea pieces where I need another one of these. Um, I'm going to do it out of three quarter pipe. Uh, I know it's going to be... That compressor's not going to be good enough because obviously that airline and it's only about, I don't know, probably five, five or six CFM, which is... It can get up to 125 psi, 120 psi, but it's not, it's not built for sandblast and it's not, you're going to need a fair size compressor for, for it to work properly. A compressor like that size, shop size compressors are not good enough to blast with. You can blast with them, don't get me wrong, you'll be able to blast, but you'll only be able to blast for a split second, well, it's a split second. You might get about one or two minutes out in it before that tank's empty and then you've got to wait for the compressor to build up to fill the tank again to then be able to start blasting again. But if you could get a better setup, probably oh that's on a normal 240 plug. Uh oh that plugs into there on 240. It's they're not really gonna be man enough to do it. That a biggest 240 um what they call it plug you can get in UK is I think it's 15 CFM, so it's three horsepower or three kilowatt. So they're big they're like kind of biggest DIY things. So I'm gonna try and aim to get it so that we can blast with uh, a standard 240 volt shop compressor, not a shop compressor, like a garage DIY stuff. This is what this is going to be. This is this is what I'm trying to get to. Is is do a do a nice little blaster that I can build inside, just with my spares. But I'll put I'll I'll put a link to everything that you need or what you might need or whatever. See, I've <laughs> I've seen people build these before, and I I, I know I know for a full fact. Where are they? You're not going to get, say like that ball valve there. Yeah, you're going to meet your, you're going to be able to meet your sand. You'll be able to close it up to slow your sand down. Or your media, don't use sand because sand's illegal in the UK. You want to be using approved medias, crushed glass, silica free. Um, them, them ball valves will wear away meter, um, yeah, media. They'll, they'll wear away just, just by sheer amount of volume of media that's going to be keep coming through it and dropping through and then whatever. But you'll see me using a few tools today. I've got, I've got a plot. Oh, my camera's gone off. I've got a plasma cutter up there, and I've got a welder. But I'm going to try and do it so that I'm going to try and steer away from using welder because I know it'll be a lot easier with a welder. But a lot of people that's doing DIY, I know, I want to make it as friendly as possible so that you can just build this and and just follow instructions and you'll be able to build one. That's what I'm hoping to get to at this point anyway. I think it can be done. I, well, I'm pretty sure it can be done. It's not that hard. I'll probably be using plasma cutter. Whereas everything else is going to be DIY. Whereas you get away with a grinder. A normal grinder will do the exact same job as what I'm planning on doing here. So, yeah, you know, look at this. I'm going to make it so. Let me get a bit of this out. I'm going to make it so that... Uh, that's what's in that box underneath. Believe it or not, there's a ton there. A thousand kgs in media. And there's Adler out there. Uh, there's about a band and a half of iron silicate there that's probably about 200 kgs maybe. 150 kgs. I ain't got no glass in here. I've got some glass in the back of the van. But yeah, I'm going to make it so that this pot, you're going to be able to blast. This is like top end at scale. This is like, you'll never be able to, well, You'll not need to blast with this in a DIY, but I'm going to make it so that you can you can blast with this stuff, or right down to the eh, what can we say? Not soda, because soda you're going to need a lot of different water traps and stuff. You're going to need a lot of air control. Uh, so probably just glass. We'll stick we'll stick with like a fine glass, so it'll go right it'll go right down to like a fine glass, which will be good enough to do if you're skilled enough. Car body parts, maybe. Maybe, it depends how skilled you are, because you can do a lot of damage with these blasters and it will, it can wreck stuff. People just show you them blasting stuff and they think that's it, it's right. But you can cause more work for yourself if you don't blast things properly. So yeah, there's, there's that aspect to things. So, 
I think I'm going to need an Amazon order here. Uh, I'm going to have to get... I found this. This is off at the bottom of a pot. Off of an old pot. So that can go... Uh, I'm going to try and get that underneath. And then I'm going to try and get... Something like this. That bolts onto the... And that can meet to your sand. So that'll be upside down. So that'll be on... I'll do it this way so you can see. Well, picture that's on the bottom of Blast pot. In this case, gas bottle. I'm going to put that... I'm going to make a fitting, a bulkhead fitting, somewhat similar, not not that, but somewhat similar to that. We're going to stick some, uh, uh, I can't really find now, it might need an Amazon order. But I'm going to stick something like this, so we're going to be able to drill and all. Yeah, and another thing, I'm going to be able to make it, I'm going to make it so it'll run up to anywhere between 20, 15 CFM all the way to... It'll probably max out about 250, 260 CFM on this. So if you can get a, if you can get a compressor anywhere in between that that range, higher the better. But I'm going to try and saw that we can still do it. I'm going to probably over engineer things. What mm, some stuff's going to be over engineered and some stuff's going to be a little bit yeah. Like um, start of it when you're putting air in. I'm not going to bother putting a, a water trap or any sort of air control because I can I can do it with this. I can set pressure here, so you don't you can save money there because you 90% of the time your compressor will have a, a pressure a pressure valve and a pressure relief valve built into it, such as like these. So if it's got pressure re relief valve in compressor, it's only going to get up to 100 psi. If it's I think that that valve will be set to probably 150. So if that gets to like 150 psi and it doesn't ever knock itself off mechanically through electronics, that valve will blow off and stop it from blowing itself to bits. So this, I know these tanks are good for, I can't, I can't remember what it is, it's something like MPG, it's about 18 MPG which is equivalent to about 500 psi. So we're never going to get up to that, we're going to aim for 100, we need 100, that's all we need. So yeah, it's the bottle itself, as long as like, all my fittings are going to be all right. Worst case scenario, all it's going to do is, is leak. You're just going to have an air leak or a sand leak. So it's not going to be that much of a problem. But I know that this this setup, these bottles, are good enough to carry that sort of CFM, uh, that sort of PSI. So really, the idea what we're going to be doing is, like I said, keeping it all DIY. I'll put a link to stuff like this, but I've also figured an, another little way out. Let me find what, what did I do? Another way we can do it. I've got this off of my van. So I might... Where else? Oh, this is what I've just used. This little setup here. I've just used to catch that end. And then kink that valve. That's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to show you that. So well, instead of putting one of these on bottom. To keep it as DIY as possible. I might just see if I can put a, a bit of blast pipe on bottom. And make a pinch, a pinch valve. So we can pinch valve up to controllers media, so that'll be a cheaper option and more DIY friendly for for sort of people that don't really want to spend any money. So I'm probably going to go down route of using that, and I'll put I'll, yeah I'll put a, I'll put a description I'll put it in the description I'll link what you're definitely going to need like to to do it like such as stuff like you're probably not going to need this it's not that much of a problem like but that is only to be able to connect that to your pot so uh, i might be just waffling on here a little bit but so that's a bulkhead oh. so that's a bulkhead we're going to put it into the bottom of the pot so we're going to drill an all in the bottom of the pot we're probably going to do it with a step a step bit or i'll probably use a plasma cutter but you can use a step bit so I'm just on drill um we're going to send that into the air I'm going to cut an all inside, probably with plasma cutter, but you're going to see it with, you can do it with a grinder. And I'm going to show you how to seal it up and make it so that you can still get to, you can still get to inside of things with your hand and your arm and you can clear it out and, and get to all the vital bits that you might need to get to. So plan is, like the, these tops, I've seen people, I've seen people having little holes at the top and trying to fill it with sand. I'm, my idea is going to be a lot better than what that is, so just stick with video if you want to make one gonna put an all inside like an access hatch so we can get to back of that bulkhead and tighten it up like I say you could just weld it you could just put a bulkhead in and or you could just put one of them fittings in and weld it just weld it into the bottom but 
I'm going to try and do it so that people people that ain't got a welder up here a welder if we ain't got a welder you're still going to be able to make one and then still do a bit of blasting anyway oh yeah I've uh, going off topic a little bit I've just tripped me sent to one of these in Black Friday sale I think I'm doing a video on it I'm not sure I'm just not I'm not happy with because that's head height so if you walk into that you're going to cut your head open a little bit a little bit stiff but what price i paid for that i think the full setup now on on amazon site is about 12 1300 quid maybe 1400 quid it stands me about 500 quid on about just all 500 quid i think it is and that's with side boxes as well but i bought wrong ones because i've only got alfreds and these are alfreds advance and they're a slightly different color that's a shiny black that's like a shiny black but it's got a texture to it so yeah it's slightly different but yeah, but just not happy with that but I'm I'm, I'm happy with it right like. look at that yeah pretty good right uh, let's get into this I'm gonna I'm gonna crack that top open I don't wanna that one's leaking away just getting a lot getting shut of excess gas in it they are empty bottles they ain't out in them like that's fully open so what you do is just just run it out i got these bottles um second hand in fact a company came to refill gas bottles that were on site and these two bottles because they've got green lids on them uh he couldn't take them and refill them because they're using a different company or something so i don't know how that works but bloke that's bought them and originally paid for them says right you might as well take them because we're never going to use them i says right hey, i've got a little bit of an idea for that so the, here we are with this um all right let's crack on because i'm just waffling on her Right, so all we're doing is we're just filling it up with water so that it pushes rest at residual gas out. It's a big word, isn't it? Residual. Plan is you can probably just get away with one, but the way that I'm gonna do it, I got them for free and I'm I'm gonna make them I don't know which one's not as dinted. I think that's dinted a lot on top. That one's not as bad. I think we'll use that as main body and we'll uh, use that as donor parts. So what we're going to do is, we're going to have that as... I think I'm going to have that where its hand comes out and bottom's going to be new top. I'm going to turn it over. Yeah, I think that might work better, save us welding a, a piece on. We've already got a piece already welded on, instead of cutting that off. Yeah. Right. So all we've done now is we'll just do that again. Kick them over, let that leak out. We'll let them leak out, then we'll fill them back up again. I'll probably do it three times, and then I know that uh, I'll be safe enough to cut into them. Right, I'm doing it cheap. I'm reusing some stuff that I've already got. I'm just going to show you. Let me just tighten that up a bit. I'm just going to show you how this works. So inside there is a bit of threaded bar. That goes into there and there's a rubber rubber sleeve here oh there's a rubber sleeve here that's got a collar on it see that collar there let me just see that they're replaceable you can get them for about 15 quid each so what you do is you just unclip it here well unscrew it either side take that rubber out put a new one in but what i figured out is you can use it so much because the way that it goes in that camera's not going to pick that up i don't think can you see, can you see it opening up there? So all it's doing is pinching that rubber to slow it grit down. But what happens is when they've had a lot of wear, these rubbers inside there, because it's only, it's only pinching it on that little bit. I keep filming one bit here because it's pinching it only on that little bit there. What you can do is same for anybody who's got one of these on their blast pot you can turn it just slacken it off turn it about so so much and then don't turn it 180 because you'll be able to get three or four turns aren't it if you do because what happens is it wears on that edge where it's pushing against it because it's obviously stretching rubber and then it sands well media is rubbing along that edge that's down there and it'll bust that rubber not bust it but it just wears it away so what you can do is you can just 
clock it a little bit and then it'll be on a fresh bit of rubber and then you'll get a bit longer out of these and you just keep twisting it keep twisting it until there's no twist left and then that'll not you'll probably get a good ball a good few well it depends how much blasting you're doing i were running it five days five and six days a week six and seven maybe eight hours a day for you get maybe a year and a half out of, it, out of that rubber probably a year and then well you get about eight months out of it six months and then you just twist it and you, you can probably get about a year a year and a half out of just keep twisting that rubber but there's a spare one in that one and i think that one's a new rubber so i'm going to probably i'm just going to examine and find out which is best rubber and end up putting that in there so all i've done so far is filled them up filled them up with water that one's just draining final it's done its three turns i might even fill them up and just leave them full of water tonight because there's no i can do anyway because i need some more bits but we're just going through what i've got that's a three quarter bsp so three quarter bsp to a what is that that's a inch and a quarter inch and a quarter fitting so three quarter three quarters to an inch and a quarter fits this this flange you're going to need that flange if you want to use that if you want to use that you're going to need that flange so i'm going to use that because i've already got this and this is what i've already got set up so i'm going to obviously put some ptfe tape around that seal it up and then bolt that this camera keeps going off bolt that to that and that's going to be my bottom bit and i think i've got um I've got the T-piece, I've got a worn out T-piece in van I think, off of my Holden. So my worn out T-piece, oh in fact I'll go and have a look, see if I've got it. No, I can't find it rest on it, I've only got this um, up left, I must have thrown the rest on it away because it, it was shot, it was no good. Um, but you can see how these work, this goes to the bottom of my pot, somewhat similar to that but a different, different thread or whatever. You can get these, these are about 100 quid and it's already built up and it's got seals in it and everything and it's got everything that you need. All you'll need is a 12 quid claw attachment that goes on this side. But that'll sit, so feed comes, media comes through this bit. That sits, bolts to your pot and you can see, you can see that plunger. There's a rubber seal that goes inside there. Turn it down a bit more. See it closing gap up. So that's that's how you meet your media on that one. And then oh that seal seal, there's a there's a little rubber seal inside that's uh, should be further up. But that fit that fit seal will be when it goes against like that, goes against its metal bar. There's a bar, so that's bar. A bit bigger obviously. And it sits across there. So then air comes in. Air comes in this side, picks its media up and then takes it up to the blast nozzle or either either, goes this way or that way, whichever you want. But I can't really use that because I ain't really got rest of stuff for it so we'll go back to this method go back to this way of doing things so I'm going to crack this open I'm going to make sure that rubber's good uh, I think I'll just probably might end up putting that rubber in if it's if it well I'll just, I'll just have a look see what happens and then if I can build this get some tape on this get this all buttoned up it's going to be good for yeah, I'm going to get it so it's good for about 250 CFM because it's going to be a three quarter internal diameters like obviously internal of that's three quarter but that's only air, um, not air, media outlet so as long as we keep we can fit we need to feed to we need to feed some air into the top to push to, to press picture that upside down because that's that's bottom that's going to be bottom so picture that upside down we need to get a, an air feed into the top here so that it pressures media and pushes it down and it keeps like a constant pressure on that on that area um and what you can do after like before so you get your air in goes into the air and then put pressures that up but also carries on to the bottom and goes across goes across bottom like this so that's coming in your media's coming in from your pot and then your air's coming down from your your, your compressor goes across bottom there and then out to your blast doors so that's what we're going to try and achieve by putting it into into that side there but i think that's i'll have to modify i might med well we'll see see how this works because i think that'll be good enough for that should be good enough for steel shot you should be able to get that shot through there as long as it's pressured up that it should it should do it let's see i'll, I'll take this to bits and make sure this is all working and then we'll bolt it together Right, let me show you this. 
So this is your internals when you turn this obviously that stays still and that, that brass obviously comes out of there and, and causes a pinch a pinching motion and then it pinches against this rubber here I think that's a better design to last an eye at it pinches it in a better place it actually goes across full thing right oh this has been turned before let me see if I can get that up to light can you see where it's yeah, it's been turned before, somebody else has done this. Can you see how it's worn? See where it rubber's worn away there? It, it'll probably still work, but while, because there's no holes in it, there's no physical holes. But while I'm at this stage, I'm going to take this one to bits and put this one in. I think that one will be... No, nope, fully shut that one. Let's take this one to bits and then we'll, uh, we'll nick rubber out in it. I'm only using that one because it's got wheel on it. This ain't got a this ain't got an handle on it. So that's only reason for that. There's no, no preferences on that line. Well, that's another one that's got a decent claw on it. The Clemco versions of these, they ain't got that that like hammer type thing there. They've just got a brass end on it and that brass end's the bit that put plunges into it. It's not new but it's a lot better. See it's it's bent at minute like because that's obviously where it's been plunging it but <coughs> if I put it into if I put it into that sort of angle let's see if we can get it up to the line let's see what it's filming. It's not, it's not frayed or out inside there. Nope. It's just rubber. So basically, if if you're doing this on cheap and you don't want to spend no money on on, on these, which I can understand, if you can get, you don't need to, you don't need this sleeve. You can do it with normal blastos or whatever pipe you're using for your blastos. Just cut a length off and this fit in here this uh, three quarter bsp just get one that's got a bulkhead fitting on it so that or or a barb yeah probably a barb would be better um screw it in tape it up put that on that end jubilee clip this to to bottom of that so it sits on so it sits on that one so you ain't got this and then like i showed you earlier make some make some like this just Probably a bit of flat, two two bits of flat bar, and then nut and bolts. Because once you've set your media, it's 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 really unlikely that you need to keep keep up and down it. You you do it first just to get its level. But as soon as you've got its level, see if see you could nip your pipe. Pretend your pipe's in the middle of here. You could nip your pipe up and close your close your media up that way, and that'd be a cheap way of having a, a meter involved. Don't go down route. Uh, a ball valve on it because they don't last two minutes I, I, well I don't know about lasting two minutes in a little pot because these are going to be like little DIY stuff so I don't know it might be all right It'd probably go down route of putting that on because you can just crack it open and that's that's like an instant thing an instant way to control it but that's only brass that inside there and these are little plastic rubbers that go around ball so these little plastic rubbers and balls are not not ideal are they oh it's longer that one it's a longer, it's a longer tube. No, longer. So I might have to put, I might have to put that end on that one. Um, I might, I might not use that. I might use because I've just actually remembered. Sees that there. I ain't got another one of them fittings. I ain't got another one of these and I know that they're quite expensive and it's not something that I want to spend money on neither. I'm just going to try and do it with bits I've got. I don't mind buying a wire piece or something off of Amazon. They'll only be about six quid or something but I think these are about 70 quid, 80 quid, maybe 100 quid now. That I can. It's that and it comes with, it comes with like a piece in here and, and T piece on it already. But they they are they're quite expensive and I don't really want to spend that. I've just I've just learned something there. 
that bit that looks like fragile that bit down there that looks like it's rubber that's twisting and, and wearing away it's actually it's actually steel shot that's embedded in it so I think rubber might be all right actually let me just clean it out and have a look at it I reckon if I put it in that way because it is worn a little bit I don't know if you can see it on camera it is worn a little bit down that edge and a little bit down that edge so if I put it in and it's it goes that way that'll make a good seal because there's no it's not worn so you only get you only get you only gonna really get one turn out of this or two two goes so I'm gonna put it in that way for now just for now we might not end up using it they're starting to stink again I can smell gas so I'm gonna fill them up with water and leave them, up, leave them overnight I think or they might end up coming back to it next weekend maybe um, yeah I might do that and just leave them full of water don't want no risks do we same goes for your guys if you if you're gonna think about cutting a gas bottle up and do it at your own risk don't don't take out that I'm doing here that's as that's how it should be done because I ain't got a clue this is the first thing I've ever done I built a blast pot before and I've done it totally different to this because I've done a professional build people always ask me they want to see it back in my van they want to see my pot reason being I don't show it is because I'm running a pot at minute yeah it's just a standard pressure pot anybody can buy a pressure pot I'm not brand loyal I'm never going to be brand loyal I'm not but there's days where I do use my pot what I've built and there's a lot of stuff on that pot that I don't want people spying and then just just using it as as their own invention or whatever because there's stuff that I've actually fought art and it's hopefully I can get some protection on it at one point in my life I'll probably get some protection on it and I might be able to sell it as a as a complete unit but as it stands at minute anybody could just copy it or Clemco could see it or any any other big manufacturer could see how it's made and then just think oh what's stopping us doing that well that's that's reason why so I don't want to put it on telly on YouTube I, don't, I want to keep it until I've got it protected us as such anyway I don't I don't know I, I'm not that kind of business person I don't quite understand how to do that but I'll get around to it one day but as it is for now I'm not actually that bothered because there's still a few bits on it that need to be ironed out a few little faults but this is a different story anyway this is just gonna be a bog basic nice and cheap well probably top skill level and a nice and cheap DIY one because I've seen them when they ain't even got these on them they ain't, they ain't got no way of controlling media so we're just going to do that same as um, I've got an idea for being able to turn it on and off the ones I've seen on internet the ones I've not seen a video built like this so everything that you see today or on this video check date stamp because I'll be I'll probably be first and to build this kind of model as such and I guarantee it'll be way for it and everybody else is going to copy this way because it is a good idea it's not it's simple it's safe it's simple safe and cheap testing see if it's uh, watertight it's full of water put this on close that up and see if we've got any leaks hey that little me top bottom anyway for now so now I've got that on and it's bunged all the water up I can flip it over and I can drill that hole and know that it's not going to blow up on me right having a little rummage about and i've found a brand new one of them it looks a bit shot inside but it's only spider's webs oh it has been used it has got a mark there but right what i were on about with clemco's version so that's your uh your thread barb it goes on end of here and then that plunger comes through there where's that plunger i've just had I don't think I've just picked it up. Have I just picked it up? I 
I must have left it down there. Um, plunger's just like, it ain't got that claw on it, it's just got that copper bit in between there. And it's just like a rounded bit of, there, what I call it. That's what it sits on there. It's, it, it's it there instead, that's Clemco's version. These are, uh, I think these are Chinese version. But that's, that's a better idea if you ask me. Being able to clamp it a little bit better instead of it just being null. But I just found this. I might be able to make some it up here. I need to get what I need to do. I need to get this. Well, not that fitting, but I'll have to find some. I need to get that so that sits there now. Not that fitting because uh, I've got. I just found this old, old what they call it, and I've just found this fitting in that box. So that's an inch and a quarter, I think that is. Yeah, inch and a quarter. So thread on them. They're about to standardise this pot to make it so that everybody's going to be able to just buy bits for it off a shelf. These bits, they're about twelve quid. It's just a pot end coupler, about twelve, thirteen quid, something like that. So um, you. To standardise it, you're probably going to need that instead, or you could use a barb and then just clamp your pipe straight to that. That's if you want to do it that way. But I'm going to go this way because then I don't have to set no, I don't have to set no pipes up. Or I've already got them already set up, so I'll just set it up now. And it's it's easier for me because I've already got all stuff, and I'm hoping to show this pot working. I said this pot, this gas bottle. I'm hoping to show this working through my machine and show it all working, and then. I know that's not going to be powerful enough, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and show that machine working, well, that compressor working this. So I'm just going to show you both ends at scale, what, you'll, what you, you'll be able to achieve with this sort of blast pot. Like I say, it's going to max out at probably 250 CFM-ish because of the air intake pipe. You can, make it, you can make it so it maxes out a lot more. I'm making it so it maxes out at 260 CFM because I'm going to go down route to uh, my air inlet's going to be a claw fitting. But the claw fitting is going to be um, it's going to be that diameter, so it's it's slightly bigger than a normal 19 mil three quarter. That's going to be inlet. Uh, that's not. I'm going to change that. But yeah, these these claws they're a lot bigger. They're a lot bigger fitting. These are a lot bigger fittings than what most three quarter like that, such as that. I know that's going to other end at scale, but that's still a three quarter. Well, it isn't, it's about whatever that is. What's that, half inch? See how it reduces down even more inside, so it bores actually smaller. So we're using three quarter, and then the maximum amount of volume is about 260 CFM you can get through three quarter pipe, depending on length of pipe, because some people say you can't even get that. You can probably get 125 PSI at the compressor, but time it's got through your pipe and got to your pot, it'll be about 100 psi and I was reading up on here somewhere, I've ground all names off it but I was reading up on here somewhere um, where is it? it's 20 bar this or oh, 30 bar so it'll hold, it'll hold 30 bar with a pressure but obviously we've, we've, we're going to drill holes in it and stuff so it's not going to be at 30 bar we, we only need 8 bar so it's it's plenty thick enough and it's plenty doable it's plenty man enough for the job job in hand anyway so now I'm just gonna have a scout through these bits of shit I've got here and see what I can because uh, I might be able to these are just different stuff what I've had on different applications of it years and then I never seem to get shuttered out I'll save them because you never know when you're gonna come in come in need of a two inch ball valve is it yeah two inch ball valve you're never gonna know such as this reducer from two inch to what's that three quarters maybe I don't know so you don't know like even that there that might be if that might be an inch to three quarter so they even just saving all these fittings it's it's going to come in handy just stuff like that especially when you're messing about with stuff like this all the time and you've got little projects on go even that there i think that would have bodged it one bit that's an exhaust it's obviously knackered like but i bodged this at one bit because i must not have had a fitting at time that fitted that I must have only had uh, male ends, so really it should it should need one of them on top really, because uh, something like that. 
that's what it should have had on it but I, I didn't have none at time see that's got that bit of weld on end there got that extra bit of metal on it that's for when original pots blast pots blow off and they're going to exhaust out at the top of these it'll blow into there and it wears that corner out so they, they put that piece on there and it uh, makes them last longer it's still shit still don't last that long but yeah It'd have been better if it weren't a 90 because they try to do it so it's all compact but thinking about it they could just probably screw it that way on I know then it's going to probably exhaust straight into your face but you could probably work that would probably work other way around anyway and, and, and something as simple as just putting that so it's facing down and it ain't got that corner on it that would eliminate that fault that it's always going to have All right that actually sits on top um, right it's there look sorry that goes, I can't remember where that goes, oh it goes back to the pot that um, this is where your exhaust will fit, so that's top of that is one of these um, that coupling there is that coupling and that's where that, so that effectively sits yeah, can you see, oh it's blown in that it's putting all in that fit in there and cracked whole pipe that probably weren't the reason why I changed that, it might have been knackered inside and such as stuff like these repair kit for these like the kit that you can get to to like all rubber seals and stuff it's the time you're done messing about and changing everything and spending a day and a half or whatever or a day fixing it it's just as cheap just to buy it full unit but i've gone off that unit now i don't i don't i still run it i still run that on my pot but i, I prefer a different a different setup in fact i'll show you the one i prefer it's somewhat similar to this yeah, it's, it's one of these, I prefer something like this, and then your exhaust goes in top, so then you've got your, your main air in or whatever, your air out goes into that, yeah, it's just different stuff, yeah, that's another one of them exhausts there, look, with some different fittings on it, oh, there look, another fault, the blow holes in them there, so that's probably the reason why that got changed, it might might not be the note, there's no up with that, it's just the fact that I probably came across that angle, a spare one of them, with, then it might have come with that. Because I don't like buying stuff new, so I'll, act, I'll buy a lot of second hand stuff, and then I accumulate more, more spares then. Most of this is what I've used, in fact all of this is what I've had on my pot, apart from that. I entered that one on mine, and I ain't used that before can't find no bigger bolts so they're gonna have to do for now we've just tested it and found out that it holds water so it'll do for now it'll do it'll do for now yeah right we need to try and get a t-piece on the bottom of there so we need to try and get let's try and get that on there as cheap as we can but this is going to be this is going to be a wear part this this is going to be this needs to be if you if you are doing it if you're buying it, it wants to be stainless steel or, yeah, along that lines, it wants to be stainless steel or better. I might change this setup here, I might change it to nut and bolt system, like, um, like that there. Because I don't know how I'm going to get, I've just, that's what I was looking for, I was looking for another flange. with Because you can buy, you can buy these flanges that's got a male, male end on it here, and I think, yeah, it's got a male end on, so, instead of, Instead of wasting money on another, you know, like another fit in there, and wasting money on this fitting, you can get them with, you can get them at configuration that you need. Like I say, I'm just going to be using what, I'll put a list at best, like the ones that you need. So like, you'll not be wasting money on buying that, and that, you'll just buy that, and it'll come with that thread on end. So it'll sit somewhere like that, but this is what I've got, so this is what I'm working with. I need to be able to get that top now. I need to convert this so it sits on there. Um, and I don't really want to buy out, as you can probably tell. Right, let me just fathom this out. I'll sort, see if I can sort it. Right, I'd rate like a, a tap and die set that were that big. So what I could do, I'm gonna leave that in actually. What I could do is thread that and screw it in, but I ain't got a tap and die set. So, I'm just going to try some, it might just break this aluminium casing, but it's worth a go. 
because this is no good to me. I don't use this style no more and I don't think I'll ever go back to this style. So it's just going to sit here and unused. So what I'm thinking of doing is trying, trying some art here. Might work, might not. Probably wouldn't work, but it's worth a go. I'm going to try and put some threads on this aluminium, because obviously this is steel, that's soft. It might just thread it and find a nice seal, but it might not. It might just thread itself. I think the idea is there. Use that and that. Oh, I don't need that one. Screw that in there. And then that'll be bottom of my pot. Straight up to my air, in, down to my blast pot, so I can put that on there. That goes to my blast, blast hose. That comes from my air in. Could do with one of those um, them pieces that go like that, like a, a Y shape, not a Y that goes like that. They do them with that's no like it's a smooth angle, so which well, it'd be that way, wouldn't it? So it'd be like a smooth angle, so media kind of dropped into line and fired it off that way because air is going to be coming in this way and firing out that way. Media is going to be coming this way and just dripping into this airline, into this stream and that stream will, will take you will take where you want to be hopefully anyway, that's plan so let's see if I can work this back into the forwards until I can close that gap up there's still a gap there and it's not such a big problem anyway because when that clamps I'm going to cut it in a place where when it clamps it's going to push against that rubber so then when it bolts up it's actually pushing amp rubber not so this is like going to be it's going to fit that way so the, the underside of that is the bit that's going to, it's going to pull it's, it's going to pull that down we'll see anyway Taps being through it. to come other way with it I want top of that to finish on top of that flange so it'll sit against that rubber so all this is basically doing is keeping that up not well it's to clamp it yeah but I've got it in the wrong place there's not enough thread on that for it to come through so I'm gonna have to cut it again grind it flat
having it, which way are we having pointy bit. See the back of that. That rubber seats on face of that. See how that one's flat? Well, it's got a flatter face than what that other one had. So I'm just, I'll tighten it up when it's on, but I'm gonna put some tape on it first. Put some tape on it and tighten it right up. I'm just wondering which way to have this facing because this will determine if we have a stuff at back and this it's front. Oh jeebus. I think I'll get another half a turn. Oh, might be wishful thinking that. So there's lots of different ways of doing these these fittings you can do it with this thread already on it so you can just screw this straight to thread on there if i remember i'll put a list in the description um the most economical way of doing it like i say i'm i'm only doing this because these are what i've got and i ain't got to buy out so i don't want to buy an out this is going to wear, like I said, that would be better if it were not such a straight drop and it would be better if it were in stainless steel, a stainless steel or an harder steel, something hard, because that, it's that bit that wears, when that's dropping and landing on there, it's the bottom of that and then this will wear and so it's like the threads on that will go, the threads, like the threads on that side will go on that one, that's your wear part, but if, if you look, if you think about it, you do, I don't know, you can do so many hours, so many ton of sand and then work it out how many times it burns it through and then you could just swap it round so that you took that to there and you put your air in like that side and you sand out this side so you get maximum wear off it but I still think it'll wear out even a, you could armour plate it and probably weld a bit of weld, bit of, another bit of bar over top on it maybe, I don't know just to get maximum aren't it because they do wear when I said they do wear an average DIY it will probably never ever burn through that but I'm not a di I'm not a DIYer am I so yeah if we keep it all like this with these sizes on bottom like I said if we keep it all factory, keep all this standard, everything's standard, like, it, you can get smaller standardised stuff, but I'm going this size because I've got this, I've, I don't have to buy an out and I've got these, so really, this could do with being three quarter inch or an inch, yeah, probably an inch, same again, so you get your three quarter barb, and then you've got your bit of pipe, you've got your bit of rubber, your blast pipe coming out, going on to another T-piece with a barb on it so you'd need two barbs, a bit of blast pipe sand blasting pipe, two flat pieces of metal like plates to, to act as that, that valve so that's cheap way of doing it so then that would be attached to that and then that would be a T-piece with another barb on it and a barb here so then you just put your hose, your blast hose onto here and, and jubilee clip it and same this side, your air inlet a bit on here with jubilee clipped. You're going to need a lot of PTFE tape on this, if you're doing the same as me, you're going to need a lot of tape on this one because they never seem to fit right these. Them plastic pipe things, they never seem to, they never, well, you'll see in a second. Oh, my tape's running out so I'm just going to see if I can get away with this much. Oh shit. See, Fred, Fred's a bit, 
Fred's are all right. Fred's are good. Same again with these rubbers. You, you're looking on here. That face, you're looking just to crack. I don't know if I'm filming this right. You're looking just to smack back side of that. You just want it to just push it proud. You want So screw it in until it hits it. You'll be able to put your finger in and feel it. You want it to hit it. And then you want it to just push. I don't know if you can see it there. You want it to just push that rubber proud. And then when it pushes it proud, when you put your next claw on, rubber to rubber, it, it makes a good seal, best seal possible. See how baggy it is? It's not... It's, it's baggy. Right. So I'm saying about putting plenty of tape on it. I might need some more tape. Plus... I'm just show it in. It's a car. Um, it's not going to lock it. I like it to lock. I don't want it to turn when blast pipes on. So as I'm walking away, I want it to be. It's, it's just starting to push on it now. Oh, it's getting tight as well. Might be alright, that. It's just pushing that proud now. It's just pushing it out, but it's not. It's not solid enough. So I think. I think I'm just going to nip it right up to this edge here and hope that it uh, locks it in place. Can't find the other ones. I don't want it to push that rubber out of place. Oh, it's making that a bit too proud there, that rubber. I don't want it to push it out either. Nah, that's not going to go. That's not going to go anywhere, that. Right, there's pretty much no else I can do today without ordering. Uh, yeah, when I say barb, when I say when I said putting a barb on it, I mean like that as a fitting, so pretend that's that's the bit that screws in and then you're left with this. So you push your pipe over, clamp it. That's what you want on there if you don't if you don't want to buy one of them. This is proprietary well not proprietary, this is this is this is a lot better than any other any ball valve. You could probably just put a ball a ball valve in there, but they do wear out and like I said, plastic and they're only brass inside, so they will they will wear out re relatively quick. This this setup that I'm building here is like semi-professional. I'd say, in fact, you built a you built it a professional job to it. Yeah, you, you would you would build it a professional. When it, the time it's done, you'll build it a professional-ish job to it. Like small to medium jobs. Oh, small, small to small. Yeah, small to small. Hey, right, just been to the hydraulic shop and got a few bits. But I'll put a list in what you need. Um, this is full of water still, and that's shut off, so it shouldn't leak. Whoa. We're gonna go from middle of that, which is about there. X marks a spot. That should do us. Right. This is 29 mil, an inch and eighth for American guys. It fits over three quarter BSP, just like that. It's, it's going to be tight. It is going to be tight, but I'm I'm hoping. See, I can just about get some thread there. I'm hoping I can thread that into metal, not tap it because I ain't got no tap. I'm hoping it's going to be really tight, so it goes in nice and tight. Uh, so we're just going to use a step bit, uh, one of these. I'm going to do it with a step drill, but it's a little bit more controlled with one of these old saws. So I'll put a link in the description how much they are. I think it was seven quid from Tool Station. So I'll just nip that up. In fact, that'll be all right. That. I'm just going to eyeball this, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I think if I aim for the middle of that, 
for it to stop rolling apart. There's a weld, there's a weld uh, mark there, so I just want enough flat for this to make a seal on, and uh, I reckon anywhere between there and there before it starts curving. So, which is. about there so that mark will take me to centre of that which is about is about there This is always scary, isn't it? Drilling into a gas bottle. It's been full of water for about, uh, well, all but weekend. About five days it's been full of water. blunt already cheap bits from bleeding tool station <laughs> fully blunt not for steel not for steel The idea, right? Oh, idea with well, there, but it's not. Uh, it's not done it. You get an idea anyway, hey? Right? That's the idea of it. I'm gonna crack um, big toys out now. I'm gonna start getting. I'm gonna get plasma cutter out. drying air or uh, drying plate off because uh, like I say I don't know if water can come back and damage I don't know that it does cause a bit of a problem with it or it can cause a problem
Right. Also would have worked a lot better that in that case. A proper also excuse me. A proper also would have worked a lot better in that case and probably a file. Get it something like and then, then file it, but I ain't got a file. I'm a cheap get and I bought cheap also. So I'm hoping now I'm hoping that o-ring I couldn't find a, a fitting that had a decent washer like a washer slash um, seal kind of thing like a big big knuckle here so you, you can probably get a tap fitting or something like that it doesn't have to be no special or heavy duty all it's doing is putting a bit of air into top of pot because this remember this is bottom and this is going to be top so all you do all you're doing it just needs to make a seal it's just got to seal it I think went nuts on back and we put another we put another o-ring with another dowdy put that on back screw it up and tight tighten it as tight as I can get it I think it'll push into these little holes let me let me show you I'll show you what I mean because of the plasma cutter it's a little bit yeah it's a little bit naughty like it should have been done with also but I'm a bit cheap so and I ain't got a file I could have cut it a bit smaller and then filed it out but I ain't even got one of them so I'm, I'm, I'm limited to what I can do so anyway I think when that goes in there it don't have to be that long neither when that goes into there like that I think there's a little tiny bit a right little bit there that might weep air out but when that's clamped up we another one of them o-rings we another o-ring at back I think it'll it'll seal it well worst case scenario I get welded out and then if you're following along trying to do it yourself you drill it and you do proper all whereas I'm having to fix my bodges because I'm not that good Hey, we're just going to do a bit of CAD cardboard assisted drawing so here's my knife Wow, these quid shop knives are shit. Fucking blades coming out. Could have used some thinner bleeding cardboard, made life easier. Crack with them, why are they coming out? Bag of shit. How can I sell stuff in quid shop that just don't do job? Right. We're gonna go We're gonna go I think two hundred mil. Will that? Will that be too big? Um. Nah, I'll go two hundred mil, and we'll see what it's like. Look at that. When you pull it, it's not coming out. Oh, it must be me pressing on that there. Must be me pressing on it. That. Ah. Like brand new. Right, next then. What we'll do, we'll draw around that on next then. So you need to, you need to have a nice little flange on back of it. So, 
the, the outside edge. So if we draw around that now, but keep an inch all the way around it, about that much, I want to be able to get the big bit to fit through that bit, which it will do because it's oval. So it should, in theory, fit through there. And that should be big enough to get your hand in and get to repairs and maintenance. Right, I'll just, I'll just run by this one for you. You don't really need that thinking about it. Because what you'd normally do, you'd normally have something like that so you can get your hand in, clear any blockages and get to fittings. But that's normally because this filler is very tight, normally. So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to put filler on top here. You'll be able to reach. You'll be able to reach in anywhere. You could get it from top, you don't need to go that. Yeah, we don't need that. Right, I need it there. I need some legs for it so I can stand it up. But I don't know how I'm going to put some legs on this without welding it. Because I've got welder, I could quite easily do it. But like I say, I'm trying to keep it as DIY as friendly as possible. And not many garages, well, not many DIYers. I've, I've only recently got a welder. I've only just recently started doing welding. I really don't know how I'm going to do this without uh, welding. Because that really legs could have been on that side here a piece of angle iron coming straight down here and then a flat bit of bottom coming back up and then a uh, what could we put on back yeah we don't, we don't need that I'm, I'm going to scrap that idea I'm not going to go back I'm not going to go for that I'm going to put that on top so now We need some legs on it, don't we? How are we going to get this?
Right, reason why that uh, weren't arcing, it uh, weren't cutting properly, I had it turned up too much, so it weren't keeping a continuous arc. So I've turned it as low as it'll go and it will cut in it fine. It's hot inside there, believe it or not. So yeah, that's um I ain't got my torch. Tell you what I can do that. Oh it's on end. <laughs> That's gonna leak that. It's gonna leak along that joint. Should have been cut with all saw. But you get the idea, if it does leak, I'll just run a bold a blob of weld around it. Because it doesn't need to come off anyway. It's just that you get the idea if you do cut it properly to the work properly. But I ain't cut it right, so Actually, it might, it might just seal that. Might just. I don't have any 90s, I've only got this one. But I don't know if camera's going to pick it up. Can you see all the shot that's built up inside? Hey, that's not going to come out, so that's that out right where. It looks like doing it with R290. So plan was to have a 90 degree bend there and have that as a Z inlet. But we ain't going 90, so we're just gonna be fixing fixing in straight from top. I'm putting this end in here so that I can put a claw fitting onto it. But I'm going to have it on a claw fitting because I've got it on a ball valve. You don't need this ball valve, that's just to turn your pot on and off. This is going to be replaced. So this bit here, this bit here, I'm, this is just for testing purposes, just to make sure it all works. I'm going to put a valve on here, I'm going to put a valve so we can turn it on and off at the dead man. At the, what they call it, at the end of the nozzle. So you can start it and stop it remotely at that end. And that's what I've not seen people do before. I've seen them use ball valves to turn it on, then turn it off, well, turn it on, turn it off. But like I said before, these are plastic and that's brass. Abrasive with air going through there. Just, when you're just capping it, right little bit, let's see how long. When you're capping it, just a right little bit, it wears that edge off. And then as soon as it wears that edge off, literally we're in, a, in about four or five hours worth of blasting, that'll be no good. So you can't, you can't turn it on and off like that. So, this is just going to be a little bit different. You can put whatever fitting in here, whatever works. So, you could you could even put an airline end on here. So that's just three quarters. So you could screw that into there and then put an, air, an airline, normal clicker, normal. Really. So, pitch it male, male version of that male version of that end you could screw it onto the uh, 
clip that's your air feed from your little compressor so that's what we got that's what we're aiming for here thinking about this logically I should have bought that I should have bought that T piece with a male end on it and a male end on it and it had to save me some money well it would have saved me some fittings if I'd have just bought that but I'll do a I'll do a, a rundown on end on what what you can change and I'll do a list of what bits you need that's going to be well the bit most efficient way of doing it right <laughs> this is a bit of a podge so I've got inch and a quarter to inch and three quarter uh, inch and a what's that inch and a quarter so that's inch and a, oh that right that's inch and a half that's inch and a quarter to three quarters so three quarters on there I could you could solve a lot of time here and get a T-piece with a barb on end so one end at T-piece is a barb so it, it did have one of them on it let's put these together Right, looking at this, what I should have done is put a 45 degree uh, angle there. So that would have got rid of that kink in pipe. So I'm going to have a little bit of flexi just so it stays about there. But it would look neater if it were tight up there. But it's kinking it, it's knocking a kink in it there. So actually, that's not too bad at that. No. I'd prefer it, I'd prefer it so it's not got a kink in it at all, so about that bar there, it wants to be about there, what have we done with our cutters, about there, because that's an hydraulic fitting it's supposed to have a, a pipe crimped onto it and crimp was inside that all there, but these little claw fittings on these airlines come with these and they've got that little bit of claw and it's just just sat on that lip which just a jubilee clip would do it because it's only gonna like i say it's only 100 psi so just a jubilee but that's it's going nowhere that right so plan now this is just here to, just just here for a mock-up I, I found an elbow that's not got chai tint middle on it so this is just as a mock-up, so you've, you're going to put your air in, so you can either have your claw fit in, your uh, three quarters claw, which is good for 250, 260 CFM. Through here, ooh, that, oh no, that's an high floor, high floor claw, the, the, big, the bigger bore. Some, some claws have got a tighter, uh, a reduced flow in them on these, so just be careful on that. So if, if you can feel that it's a big one, it'll do it. So it's same bore all the way through, three quarter. I think it's 19 millimeter on internal bore. So it's 19 millimeters all the way through. So it goes in here, goes down to the blast pot. So this is your choke valve. So you'd start if you're having bother with any sort of media inside here. That's not naturally open. Leave that open all times. It's only if you've got a cloggage, uh, you've got a bit of damp media or whatever. You can just, while blaster's running, you can just run that up and then put that back down again. And then what that does is, all air coming in goes straight into the top of the pot and pushes whatever's in way, providing it's getting sieved and stuff, it'll only be a bit of cardboard or crap, as, as long as you sieve it. So it'll go through that way, or if you've got a bit of damp media and it's been stood in pot for a long time and it's not flowing properly, 
you can just crank it a little bit until you find out what works for you but you still need you still you still want your floor to go that way that's just so that if you crank it it just restricts this to put more into the air to to, to get more air into that to push it through found that in my old old box of bits right slight change of art with this I've uh, I went rummaging and I found this in a box of water. Um, that that's solid. I can't undo that from there. So I'm pretty sure I don't need any uh, PTFE tape on it because it'll have welded itself shut. That one's solid. That one turns. What is that one? Can't remember which one I turned. I think I turned one. Well, it, it was really solid. Oh, you're right up there. It was really solid. So all I've done is 45, 45. Found that bar found that bar so now I'm just going to put that to there like that and look at that it's nearly perfect if you wanted to you could shorten that bar a little bit and that would that would get you your angle I oh, know it's, it's near enough perfect that it is it's perfect what am I going on about right like everything else I've got you're supposed to do that and it knocks that pin off there and it releases its jaw but mine's broke so yeah and I've tried cutting metal pipe before with it and stuff so not ideal but yeah it did it it did what I needed it to do not let me down apart from breaking so that wants to be right about there Right, don't forget that this is set up for 260 CFM with three quarter inch. Anything you, you probably could, you probably could squeeze a little bit more CFM through, or probably not CFM. You, you, you could get a little bit more pressure on it if you had a bigger compressor. So this, this pot will be definitely good enough to do small to medium jobs. And I mean medium jobs like you could take a chassis, you could do a, a wagon chassis with it, or a tub. Uh, a, a, do you know like them tubs on them things? Because I expect this to last, um, media wise, probably about 40 minutes, 30, 30 to 40 minutes when that's full of media. So you'll get you'll get a decent bit of blast time out of this, at, at full throttle at 260 CFM, it'll do that. But if you're doing it at a smaller CFM, and you're constantly blasting, you might, you might end up getting about an hour, two hour, an hour and a half maybe. Depending on how much air you can get through it at what pressure, you'll, uh, you, you might do all right with this. You'll have to let me know if you've built one and then uh, see how you get on. And I can offer advice and tips and tricks and whatever if uh, stuff's not working properly. Just drop me a message, but keep it on YouTube. I don't want it on, I don't want emails and stuff. Oh, I just want YouTube videos related to YouTube videos, I'm not interested in all else because it's an hobby this, this is an hobby, I'm not I don't have to do this I'll have to do it, I'll have to do it with, with spanner Whew, tight then It's got to look right, isn't it? I mean, it looks like an upside down black gas bottle, but it'll not do. Trust me, it'll look all right. I was going to say it's nearly ready. It's ready for blasting then, but we need to do this, don't we? we need, to... need to fix this somehow. That's where that gas bottle comes in. We're not just going to nick the inside. We're going to... Um, um, I was going to take a piece off at side and all and use it inside. Like I said earlier, we were going to put that cut that cut out in the middle there so you could get to the bottom of the pot, but you can reach it all through the top anyway. Um, so now I'm just going to lob that top off, cut it a little bit bigger than what my hole is, and then I'm going to
turn it sideways and put it in that's why it can't be circular you can't you can't cut it out that big and then cut an all that big and then expect to be able to get that piece inside there that's why we've done it like that so you can cut it out bigger now but you can turn it sideways and it'll fit through or you could do it some sort of 50 pence piece style like an hexagon or a, whatever the 50 pence is um, but that same contour that rounded bottom it's got will sit perfect on that one because obviously it's the same bottle so but we're not just going to do that we're going to we're going to utilize you'll see it you'll see in a minute anyway Once, once fettling up with grinder light, but that'll do it. Same contour. Beautiful. If you're still wondering how this is going to work, I'm going to have a slot of rubber around there. I could even just rub it full top. I've got got some rubber. Alt, any sort of mat, alt that's like a softish rubber, well any rubber really, alt. Alt that's big enough that you can just put over that or just round that edge. Wants to be one continuous piece, could even be overlapping. So what's going to happen is, picture that's inside there, we're going to nut and bolt it with some threaded bar. So that's going to be our yeah, nut and bolt it because I just weld a I just weld a bar to it at the minute. That's that's probably what I'd do. But like like I said, we're keeping it DIY friendly, so I can't see you, can I? Yeah. So what I'll be doing is I'd normally just weld it, tack a bar to that, and then uh, thread a bar maybe, and then make a little bit of a bracket so that you can you can do that. I'm going to show you that anyway. I've got an idea for that. But as for now, I'm just going to clean this off. I'll drill it and because it's well basically because it's round it's not going to matter if it seals like that it'll still make a good seal it'll still seal so all you got to do really is just hold it up enough tight and just enough all it's got to do is just sit so you don't have to crank it down, you don't have to tighten it right up. All it's got to do is just sit like that. So then when air goes in, it expands and all air will do work itself, pushing it up, making it seal. So there's no no real need to worry about having a big old thing here that's going to do it. What you could do, what you could do at all, um, if, you were to, if there were two men using it, you could have one man just holding that, turning air on, and then that'd be it. It'd be done. It'd be blasting. That'd be sealed. Everything would be done. But it's going to be a one-man operation. So, like I say, you could just have a you could just have like a, a bar going across here, and then a bungee on to nut and bolt there. Maybe a bit of rubber elastic. So then, when you put your sand in, it automatically pushes it down with weight at sand. When it's depressurized, obviously, and then it'll push itself down, and then it'll spring its. Yeah, I might do that. I might put a spring on it. Just troubleshooting. I'm just brainstorming. Hey, I've just uh, cleaned that off. I'm gonna. I found a bit of old rubber. Should do a job. I'm gonna put. It's a little bit too small, but it'll do. Start cutting a rough shape part. I'm gonna. Uh, I think I might cut that off there. Need to drill that now. Put an all in the middle of there. Um, and we need to make a seal for it for nut and bolt. All right, so that's what I'll do next. Yeah. 
Oh, lucky bleeder. Yeah, I don't think it'll matter if it's... Let's bring you on a little bit closer. Come here, dear. See there. What are you looking at? See, I don't think it'll matter if it seals there, there, there. Oh, it would there, like. You can't, it can't go the wrong way. It's got to be. It's got to be there. It's got to be that way, so. What we'll do, we'll draw some arrows on it. So we know that that's. So we know that that's that direction. And then we can uh, we'll draw some arrows on it. Yeah. Right, let's draw an arrow on it. That will eventually wear off. But so we can have short arrow there. Short arrow there. So I've got a feeling sand's gonna wear that off. Not sand media. I don't suppose it's a, a big job for somebody just to draw a line on it anyway when it's running out. So it'll not matter if it's like that. Or like that. It'll not matter if it's even there. As long as it's generally in that area. If you're trying to seal it and it looks like and it looks like that, it's not gonna seal. If you're trying to seal it and it's any more than that, geez, you want you won't show it in. It'll still seal. Yeah, it'll still seal as long as that rubber can touch. I don't know why they put a magnet in them. I wonder if this has got one. Yeah. Look at that. I right know why that happens actually. Because if if gas is getting filled up, when it's getting filled up, it'll cause sparks. If bit, little, little bits of metal rub against each other, it can cause a spark, potentially a bomb. So yeah, that's not a bad idea having a magnet inside it. Right, I don't know where I am with this video now because I've had a, a, a couple more projects I've just been on with. Um, I've cut that, I don't know, I don't think I filmed it. But on inside a gas bottle, I've, I've done this so that that, you know, this sits in here. Right, I know that I said I weren't going to use welder, but I'm going to weld some legs on it as well. But you could also just use it as it is on a sack batter. Probably one a little bit more stu sturdier than that because uh, it's not it's not ideal. But it would work at that. It would definitely work at that. Right, this this has turned up my um, my valve, but it's shockingly small on internal. I didn't know. I didn't realise it to uh, reduce so much. So it's. That's going to be no good. 
it needs to be bigger internals so I found another one I think that were a tenner but I found I found another one that's uh, I think 40 quid and it's uh, slightly bigger diameter internals are 18 mil which internal of that is 19 mil so and this is all 19 so internal internal diameter of all this lots 19 mil which is like I said which is good for about 260 CFM so we um, we're reducing it to that it's just gonna it's just gonna choke it it's not gonna not gonna perform as it should so I'm gonna get a better one of them put a better put a better one of them on I'm gonna cut this so it's like so it's gonna have a like a triangle aren't it so it's gonna have a, a dip and then a, a slight thing up there so I can put a piece of angle iron yeah a bit of angle iron so I can put a piece of angle iron across here drill an all in the middle of my me mesh bolt it to this and have it so well have that so it, it moves freely in between that so I don't know how I'm going to do that without it to uh, whatever I don't know I'll figure that out but that's going to go inside there and this is going to come up onto my angle iron that's going across here so what I'm going to do is when you twist it it's going to drop that I'm going to drop that down and then when you twist it back it's going to lift it up and lock it into place because the way that I was thinking of doing it is uh, not and bolting this and putting putting a thread on it, but when sand goes on it, it's gonna it's gonna fill these threads up and it's just gonna be it's gonna be a nightmare to turn it in and out to tighten it up and slacken it. For the amount of times that you're gonna need to be in and out on it, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a pure pure pain in ass. So other design is to have a piece across here and then just when you turn it, it drops that so it'll drop it and then when you turn it it comes back up its triangle so 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 that's cut out there that sort of thing so angle line will sit in that gap when it's low both sides allowing that to drop and then when you want to tighten it you just come back you're just lifting it back up onto the top of here so that's what I'm going to do now Hey, I ran out of, uh, well I ain't got no threaded bar so next best thing, weld two bolts together. So, that goes in there like so, that goes over there like so. That's going to be tricky to get in. Not that tricky. I can't reach chuffing up now for it. drawback we're having that mesh in there you're not going to be able to line that up chicken bleeding mm.
Yeah, that works a treat. But, so you drop it down, crack your bag on there, bush, bushka, all stuff will fall in, tighten it up, done. But, only trouble now is, can't line that thing up so it sits in there. You can't get your hands in for, for this. Unless, unless we have a, uh, we put some it on that so we can, uh, so we can twist it to whatever angle we need. You know, like a little handle on that there, yeah, like, so I can just about see it there a minute. There you go. And just about to see it here, it wants to be. Wants to be there when you crack it up or anywhere around there. So that's gonna be a that's gonna be a ball like that. It's gonna be a bit of a, a bit of a what do you call it? A let down. That do that. Done. So, redneck style, uncool for whatever, is do it like that and run it like that. But I don't think you can fasten that because if you fasten that, you're not going to be able to do it because if you need to change that, that sieve, if you need to change that, you're not going to be able to do it. So, it's going to have to be like that, I think. Let me think about this one. Right, I've got a right idea. I've put nut under here. I'm actually, <laughs> simple. Nut under here and um, just get this lined up so that that lines up to where it needs to be. And that's, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be somewhere in region of looking like it should be. So, now we know that that's now I know that that's somewhat like there, and I nip that up. So now, in theory, that's kind of locking that to that. That's perfect. That's all lined up. And that's tight. That's it, done. Perfect. Right, that's like brand new now. Fill it up with sand. Lands perfect every time. It might need checking every now and again, but. I was thinking I might have to weld that, but I don't actually do I? I don't need to, because you need to get it on and off. Right, that's pretty much done, um, considering if you want to keep it DIY. So, basically, don't forget that we can make a cheap grip valve, you don't have to go that style. That's just a nice little grip valve that I had laying about. All this is just nice and cheap. Um, bit of mesh. Uh, what else? That's a basic setup. So then we're going to start and uh, I'm going to modify it now so that we're going to uh, put a electric valve on here so we can turn it on remotely.
test it from the alley because I've shut the valve at the bottom and I've shut the valve that goes down to the bottom so we'll, we'll try this we need to uh, we need to run this up here now I'll put some soapy water I'm gonna knock all this off knock this shit off here I'm going to put some soapy water around everywhere to see if I've got any air leaks. Yeah, I've got one there. I must have welded through. Yeah, I can feel it there. I think I've got a blob more weld on that. just gone a little bit overboard with that. I've uh, I saw a little hole it was down there so what I've done is I've just caked it in weld and just put some blobs in, filled it up, let that cool down. Seems like I, I can dress all this lot up later, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. I was just gonna weld it where where that is because that's double thickness because that goes inside that and that overlaps that thick. So all I was gonna do was just tack it there and tack it there on both sides but it just made sense to put a little one in the middle and that's probably why I've blown through but you live and learn and I'm not a welder I'm a sandblaster so I put this plate on bottom because when it's full of sand it's going to be a little bit heavy so I just wanted footprint to be a little bit busy, bigger uh, oh shit need to get that off and all I can dress it all up later don't worry about it looking a bit uh, coof but now my next plan is probably put some at I'd like a I'd like a pipe bender to be fair, so I could put some pipe up here and then down to here, and then just keep all the gubbins inside. So if it does fall over in back of a van or somewhere, it doesn't just smash all this lot to bits. So that that what plan to try and put some metal along here, but I ain't got out and I'm not good enough at bending out, so I think I might just uh, put uh, I could just tack a bit of angle iron on and just put a brace of it back here. But then it's adding a lot of weight at back of it, and it's 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 centre of gravity is basically just over that. Well, probably centre of gravity is about here. So there's a lot on it just sat on back here. Yeah, here well. Let's have a let's have a little butchers at this. I think I'm going to put a bit better weld on that. <laughs> I think I'm going to put a bit more blobs on it.
press that. That looks alright now. bubbles on that seal there, I don't know if y'all can see it or not oh, because that's not tight this needs addressing so that's not staying on anywhere. Got a very weak air leak on that front there on that seal. Might be there were a bit of a burr left over on cutting edge. Or it might need some softer rubber putting on top instead of that rubber because it's a bit hard that. It is leak. Oh, it's leaking that screw hole as well. That bolt hole. Better rubber is required on that. Oh, this is leaking yellow. That's that joint there. Sandblasting, all you do is well, I'll just dump all this air. There's not enough air in this. That, that compressor's shit. I mean, like, it's probably about 4 or 5 CFM. It's not, it's not mega much. So, I need to, what I need to do now is tighten that fit in there. If I tighten that fitting, it will push down on that rubber inside there and it will seal up rubber between that and that. As I've got it at minute, I've got it so that that is trying to make seal against rubber on that. But yeah, as you can see, it's, it's leaking air. This top seems to be getting better. 
think it just needs a bit of work a bit of work on that a bit of sand in it and that in fact that's not a big concern I'd, I'd be happy to run it at that that's not too bad I'm a bit I'm a bit concerned over that because that's going to lose all air but I reckon maybe maybe if we shove two or three pots worth of sand for it it might seal that anyway because that sand gets weird into little joints doesn't it you've got to bear in mind there's no there's no media gone through this year so there's that that needs uh, addressing right that's compressor that's just caught up i'm not too bothered about that i think that's not a bad not a bad yeah that's not bad at all that rest on it's all right that's getting changed anyway there's only that really that's starting to bubble here as well let's put a few bubbles around that edge see that's down to that hole saw if we'd have had a good hole saw we'd have been able to get a better seal there so i could just run a bit of weld around it but i tried doing it as diy as possible without using a welder or well, grinder, you'd, everything I've done with, what they call it, with plasma cutter, you'd be able to do it with a grinder. But that's that's that set up, that's ready to go now. Uh, I'm going to just leave that, I think. I'm, oh, I'm going to probably put that, that claw back on and run it off my com my compressor, what's in van. Um, because that compressor, that's only other, com I've only got that and that big one. That's too small and that's relatively too big, so, um, yeah. I want to show you how to make some pipe and that now and then show you what to do if you're a blaster or you take it serious and you, you're doing pipe making and stuff you only invest in a pair of these 64mm, uh, that'll do an inch and a quarter pipe I believe but mine's brock, what you're supposed to do is when you open it up, it's supposed to release that catch, but mine's brock, so I've just got to put a put a screwdriver down there and push that rec that mechanism so it opens it up. But I've tried cutting stuff that I'm not supposed to cut and it's uh, it's damaged my cutting face, but it still works. So take that a bit of batting off there. Yeah. Not, there's not going to be enough air in that machine to for a for a what I call it for a, a smaller for a smaller size compressor you want a smaller pipe um, like smaller length you don't want to be running too much length out because your compressor is going to struggle to try and fill that pipe as well as fill pot as well as try and blow through for blasting so that that's going to be it, it probably could do with being about 10 meter less just less than 10 meter or so but I'm going to do it about 15 meter-ish, somewhere along them lines. Right, be beauty about them cutters, they cut it flat. So you might need to just trim end off when mine's been a bit blunt like but they cut it flat so that when you put this next bit on you'll see what i mean so well um let me get my bits we're gonna go for these style um claw fittings so you've got um you've got a got a clip there and a clip there that ain't got a rubber in it so i'm not going to use that one this one's got in fact let me show you this one's got a inch and a quarter to three quarters pipe is it three quarters might be just a little bit bigger might be just a bit bigger i don't know but yeah you, yeah you can use both of these you can connect both styles to it so as long as you've got a rubber in there so what we're aiming to do now is when we push when we screw this in here i want some lube on that put a bit of lube on it Bit of grass off at uh, fault lift. Might not be enough there. Yeah, that one enough. So what we're aiming to do here, when we screw this on, 
we're aiming for rubber just to touch underside of that and then we're just going to try and push it so like just twist it a slight little bit right can you see how it's made that proud that might be a little bit too much but I think I'll run with that because that'll we check we check that it's got a good seal along that edge there and now we just send some screws through here yeah grub screws would be better just to just to nip into pipe but you can also use wood screws any sort of screws it don't matter if it goes all the way through because blast media that's flowing through there will work tops of them screws off in no time and then it pl it plugs it so it doesn't really matter about size of the screws somebody in the comments is going to say yeah you can't do that you can't do that well i've done it for years and it's never bothered my work All that's doing is stopping that from unscrewing. That's all that is. That's all them screws are for. And then this is your nozzle holder one. It's near enough exactly the same. Goes on the other side. Rubber inside there sits on face again. So that sits on rubber. When you screw your nozzle in, it crunches that up and making a seal inside there. That's, that's what we're aiming to do here. I don't look like it's cut right nice to me, so save me any headache later on. I'm gonna just cut it straight now. Get out of your bleeding thing. Right, I know I said at the start of the video that it would be set for 15 CFM. I think that's the biggest you can get on a three phase, a single phase um, 240 volt compressor, which is about, yeah, which is about 15 horsepower, uh, yeah, 15 CFM, something like that. Well, the smallest nozzle I've got is a 450. I believe that's quarter inch. It's this is what's important bit to try and get that set to that. So this this is your most important part, and then like your secondary stuff is your thickness of your pipes here and your thickness of them sort of pipes and stuff like that. Well, I know that that pipe's not going to be no good. I know that that quarter inch ain't going to feed this quarter inch um, nozzle. It's about I think you need a minimum requirement at 80 cfm to get 100 psi. So that's. That's about 5 CFM that compressor, so that's not, not, not nowhere near good enough to be fair. So I'm just going to change that back over to the claw fitting and that 3 quarter inch, which 3 quarter inch will take you up to say 260 CFM, which will be ample for that size nozzle and this size pipe, all that size baggings and stuff like that. Um, I'm, just a bit, uh, I'm just a bit disappointed that I ain't got a smaller nozzle, I thought I'd got a 2 but they're into two and I think a two you'd still need at least 50 CFM so I believe you'd be able to get a, some sort of I don't know how it works but it'll be some sort of what they call it blast end the one that goes on like a blast booth not like a blast cabinet yeah you'll probably end up using blast cabinet pipe and blast cabinet nozzle which nozzle will probably be a, a, a lot smaller See, that's a 4, so hashtag 4, which is a CDX450, that's Clemco part number, um, which is quarter inch diameter, which is about, oh, I don't even know what quarter inch is. Um, so, uh, that's still pressured up, that by the way, so everything inside there, and that compressor ain't kicked in to, to whatever, see what PSI it is. It's set at 95 PSI. Yeah, sat at 95 psi, so and there's very, very, very minimal air leaks like that. Yeah, there's it is leaking on that seal there, but if I could be bothered, I'd take that off and I'd polish inside of that um, thing where I plasma cutted it. I've only hit it with grinder, so I'll probably put some softer rubber on it. That'd probably do a job. Um, everything else, I'm, I'm happy with, like even down to 
that's not leaking no more, that's stopped on its own. Um, just don't know, just didn't, didn't really expect that. So what I'll do is, I'll take, if I take the air off there, it's going to blow out everywhere. Um, I turn compressor off. Turn compressor off and then I can show you a little bit with air that's inside the tank. This in this entire you do it by the way because this if I open this up here all it's going to do is drain drain air out of this cylinder. So you normally to get sand flowing you just crack it. So we'll just let that depressurize now through there. But that's how you'd normally blast. You'd have that open. You can see that. And that's how you'd normally blast. So you'd have so I'm just depressurizing everything at the minute. So we know that that we know that, that seal inside there we know that rubber is a good rubber because obviously that's holding pressure back so we know that that's good and that's only a choke valve that quick I'm just going to change that back to a three quarter. Um, plan is I'm going to have a, a lot of call it on here, I'm going to have a remote, I'm going to have a valve on here where it's um, you run a wire up to your cable, uh, up to your nozzle so then you, a bit like mine on my setup you'll have a you'll have an on off switch here so that you can turn air on and off so it'll be a naturally closed system so that there'll be no air passing through that machine that pot until you tell it to at this end so then when you shut it down it shuts everything down at this valve so that's what I'm going to put on I've got I've got some proper valves here like some some proper ways of doing it but they're expensive and I don't think people's going to want to spend like 200 quid or whatever or 250 quid or whatever that is I think that's an award there look I, think, uh, I don't think you're going to want to spend like 300 quid or something on something like that I think there might be more of them now, about 350 quid maybe, something like that, I don't know. I haven't bought them for a long time, I've I've come off of that style, in fact, now I'm still running both of them styles actually. On one pot I've got that, and on another pot I've got that one. But I kind of like that one, I like that setup. It does, it does fuck up a little bit easy though, it does, there is something inside that that does knacker up, but that one's a slightly cheaper valve, in fact you can get them valves when they're on offer. I think January sales and stuff like that, you can get them valves a lot cheaper than what they're advertised at. So yeah, that's that's something to look out for if that's what you wanted to do. But just needs a valve on here. Just wants a valve on there and that's good to go. That's ready to oh a valve and a switch. Oh I could have put battery on front here, couldn't I? Could have made it so that we could have a 12 volt battery on front to power up valve. Oh that'd have been a better idea, wouldn't it? In fact I'd probably want to slide one down there. A little motorbike battery. It's only to valve. It's only to pull out what they call it. Pull a, um, a magnet motor in just to pull valve out, so that because it's under spring tension, this valve, so the valve will be naturally closed until you energise it, and then it'll pull. It'll pull system up, and it'll pull it so it'll allow air to flow through. So yeah, but yeah, three quarter inch gubbins. All these three quarter stuff, like I say, is good for 260 cfm ish. Right, 250, 260 cfm up to that depending on how long your pipe is from your compressor and then how long this pipe is and, and depending on what nozzle you've got it all plays a factor, everything plays a, it plays a part in that so I was trying to get it so that you could run this pot off of a baby compressor but it's turning out that you can't <laughs> uh, well you, you probably could but you're just going to be down to like probably 40, 50 psi whilst trying to blast and it's not it's not ideal you want to be the more air the better the more flow that you get the better so i would try and i'll try and in fact if you did it 
If you did everything out of three quarter, out of quarter inch, not quarter, half inch. If you did that out of half inch, half inch, all them, all them bottoms out of half inch, and then you'd be onto your pipe, which would be a cab glass cabinet pipe. I'm waffling. Right, we're just going to wrap that video up part there because it's getting a little bit long. It's a two hour video, two hour and 15 minute video. Uh, next video will be, it'll have its remote valve on it so that it'll be, well, next instalment of this video, it'll blast itself and we'll dress it up so it don't look like a gas bottle. Well, it'll still look like an upside down gas bottle, but it'll look a lot better because we're going to blast itself and then we're going to uh, paint it. We'll put the, put the 12 volt valve on the top uh, add a battery to it and then we'll do an electric system to it so that we can operate it remotely from from end. I've kind of wrapped it up here because it can still be run at that with two men. So you could have a man stood at pot turning it on and off with that ball valve at top or that slider or whatever you want to put on top. All you got to do is you just got to have somebody watching what's happening all the time. So like your pot man will be watching and keeping an eye out what when that when blaster wants something to turn it off. So yeah that's basically that that's a full setup that's that's it working that port will be really good for small to medium jobs when i said tubs i mean like wagging tubs so like i don't know you know like your, your earth movers your tipper bodies it'd be good for that it'll be good for engine parts it'll be good for well it'll probably be overkill for engine parts it's it's you'd, you'd probably get away with an house clean with that you'd be able to take paint off an house with that pot quite easily without any problems as long as you've got a decent sized compressor yeah you, your compressor is going to be the one that's that's going to be drawback that pot's not going to let you down that's everything on that pot is basically maintenance free everything on there uh, you, your wear parts is your t-piece at your bottom your sleeve inside for your pinch valve and then i can't really see how else going wrong with it only use an error when it comes to putting that trying to seal it up at top if you're trying to seal it at top you just got to try and get it so that it's it's centered or them arrows are lining up if if that's the case it is fairly easy it doesn't have to be perfect like i said in video if we went if we went with a softer rubber or i'd have polished inside of that drum up where i where i cut it out with welder it with plasma cutter sorry if if we'd have polished it up a little bit better that rubber might have been better um, if you are going to go down welding route, don't bother buying all them bits like that. You can buy weld on parts that's a lot cheaper than what that is. It's just that I've gone down that route because it's just what I had laying about and it ain't really cost me any money. Only thing that's going to cost me money is I'm probably going to have to buy, I'm de well I'm definitely going to have to buy that valve because I ain't got a valve. Um, I didn't really know what else on it that's cost me any sort of money, everything's just what I've had laying about, so it, it is a cheap build for somebody that has got a few bits. If not, I'm going to start and do an Amazon list now so that I can, uh, oh, I've got some in my eye, uh, I'm going to try and do an Amazon list so that you can, you'll do a DIY, we'll do, we'll do a DIY version so that um, like your bulkhead, you screw in, <laughs> smell lad. If uh, if you do your, your screwing version, so like your bulkheads and stuff like that, and your pinch valves and your, your cheap way of doing it, so you ain't got a grit valve, you'll have a pinch valve uh, with blast pipe in between. So I'll do two separate lists. I'll do a list where we can do it so that it's really cheap, as cheap as possible. It, it was quiet before I started filming, and then I decided to start wrecking house. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll do that list. We'll do a list where it can be as cheap as possible with bolt-on bits, so you don't need a welder. And then we'll do a list of weld-on bits, so the cheapest way of doing it with a welder. And then we'll do a. Oh, that's all you need, isn't it? That's all you need. You don't need no else. If you got a pipe bender and a and a tap and a, yeah a tap, so you could put your your on your inch and a quarter. If you could put thread on bar. On threaded bar you could do all that at a solid bar and if you had a pipe bender even better you'd only need one two three you'd only need three fittings if you had a pipe bender three fittings and a welder it's it's really simple it's really cheap how to do it if that's how you wanted to do it but like it's a bit video it's um, it's just how it is 
So if you want to, oh, we're going to clip it off then. If you want to see final video or final verdict on it, just watch out for part two on it. It's going to be blasting itself and we'll be painting it and we'll be dressing it up so it looks a little bit better. Reason why I've left that cap on bottom, um, on what light set gas bottle bit at bottom that where you lift it. I've left that on so it's a bit of, bit of security because it's already on and I don't really want to have to cut it off. It's a bit of security so that that, that grip valve don't get whacked in the van and it doesn't break out so it's a bit like a shield in it, it can protect itself. So th there's, there's that. Um, you could even go down that route of putting a electronic choke valve on it so then if you are having if you have got shit media and it is clogging up a lot you could you could even have a button on your on your probably in your pocket or whatever and i can even do it right i've seen i've seen these i don't really i don't recommend this at all i can even make it so that it's remote so that you could have that switch bluetooth to or wi-fi to on off switch but then you're introducing a problem if there's a power shortage on your remote control it's going to cause problems. Um, you're going to need more power, a bit more technical. I've seen I've seen these up for sale, and they're a lot of money, and they're really really simple to do. And I can do it quite easy. It's not a it's not a big job. It's not not big at all. But I just don't like that idea. I prefer a wire, and then the way that it's going to be set up is I want it so if there's a fault or that wire gets broke or battery goes flat or any sort of fault or any sort of malfunction. It shuts itself down mechanically with with let with spring inside its box. So if there is a fault or a short or power loss or any sort of thing like that, I want it so that operator safe. You if you're messing about with that up that end, you might even be up scaffolding. That thing might be on the floor. Are, are you going to turn it off? You're not going to turn it off, are you? You've got to be able to. You've got to be able to. Like it's got to have an override system. So. Everything that I've tried doing is, is safe and simple. So, simple, safe and cheap. I like cheap. The only bit that's going to be quite expensive on this video, and I mean quite expensive, is going to be, uh, it's probably your nozzle. Your nozzle that you're matching up to your, why does that keep going off? Right, it's, it's probably going to be, your nozzle is going to be your most important part and it's going to be the most expensive because your nozzle needs to match your CFM or your compressor. So forget about everything else. Your nozzle and your, your CFM and your compressor is the most important part of blasting. Forget anything else. It's it's basically that. So then the next the next line of things is what diameter pipes you're using. So it's pointless having 400 CFM and a 400 CFM uh, nozzle if your pipes are only three quarter inch. You, you need to upgrade your pipes then. That's when you start start looking at that sort of thing. Uh, such as running up to 260 CFM, 250, 260 CFM. Yeah, if your nozzle's good, your pipes at rate size, your alt rate diameters, but if they're too long, if your blast pipe's too long or your pipe from your compressor to your blast pot is too long, then you're gonna have issues. That it's, it's not got enough pressure and it's not got enough flow to keep that pressure. People, I've, I've had a few comments saying you could do a turning pressure up and having it higher pressure. Reason I don't have high pressure is because one, it's fatigue. You, you fatigue that that pipe at 100 psi is plenty. You can manhandle it. You can you can handle 100 psi. Start going above 100 psi. That's when you start getting blasted blaster fatigue, and you're not economical on your on your blaster, on your sand, on your fittings, on your pipes. There's a lot. There's a lot of reasons why that you keep it at 100. 100 is optimal. Even if you drop to 95 psi at the nozzle, you're not optimal. You're going to lose more media. You'll use more media. Uh, you use more diesel in your compressor trying to feed it. So you need to be matching that nozzle to get the right pressure and right CFM. That nozzle needs to be perfect to that compressor. Same as your, even if it wears or it's worn a bit and it's it's got a few pits inside. It might feel like it's blasting RA. It will. It probably will blast RA, but you'll not be optimal. It's it's important to keep an eye on. You can get gauges that match um, that tell you your get like your thing on your nozzle. You've got loads of different things where you can test them to make sure that they're still rate wear rate thing and whatever. But that that 450, I'm going to swap that out and probably put a 650 in. So then that's 230 CFM. 
So 230, a minimum air requirement of 230 CFM with an hashtag 6, I think I do believe, which is a CDX4650. So that's a Clemco part number. Um, so 650 in the UK is, I forgot what size it is. I, I just know it from whatever. And I've got different nozzles in van. So the way that I work my pressures on my compressor is I don't have to, I don't need no air control, like having to put a pressure gauge in and a pressure relief, like whatever. No, like trying to reduce airflow to, to get me pressure so that I can blast delicate stuff. I can just go down my nozzle sizes. Well, sorry, up my nozzle sizes. So if I go up nozzle sizes, I lose my pressure, but I keep my flow. So picture it as like a garden hose pipe. You want that tap on full because you want the maximum amount of water on in our case, air, you want the maximum amount of air to, to travel to the nozzle. And if if you're reducing it with a pressure, pressure valve, you're losing your flow. So you, my way of thinking is when I'm doing blasting is I want as much air as I've possibly got on tap to, to do what I need to do. Um, so to reduce pressure, you, you up your bore size of your nozzle. Like I said before, if you go too far up, you're not optimal. But some jobs require that you need less pressure so you can go up your nozzles to lose your pressure or if you're trying to get more psi aren't it you want to be going you want to be going down a size but your compressor also needs to be able to cope and, and manage more psi some machines are dual machines i've i've seen these machines about and it, they are good ideas but a dual a dual pressure machine don't give you as much flow as what a separate standalone unit of gear. So like, and some of my videos, early videos, you'll have seen me using that 260 CFM. The newer version of that is 250 CFM, but it's also a, a dual pressure machine. So it'll run at seven bar or seven and a half bar, eight bar or whatever. So it's 125 PSI. You can flick switch and it goes up to 175 PSI. But when it goes up to 175 PSI, your flow has dropped, so then you're down to probably 170 CFM, but you get more more pressure. So swings and roundabouts, you can't have both. You can either have flow or pressure. So optimal is 100 PSI, plus all your fittings and your baggings and your wear parts and everything on your machine wants to be running at 100 PSI. Or try and get 125 at your compressor, by the time it goes through your line from your compressor to your blast port, through all your blast port, it fills your pot up, it does everything else, it's pressured everything up, then it travels to your nozzle. It'll be about 100 PSI, so that's optimal. That's that's reason why I say 100. I do do jobs when I've... I might have, I've got a video coming out, or I've probably already put it out. I've got a video coming out where I've used some steel shot at 175 PSI to put a profile. The only reason we've had to do it is because we're trying to put a profile on stainless steel. So... To get a profile on stainless steel, hitting it 100 psi, yeah, you're going to achieve that, but it's not going to be as deep as what it would be if you were hitting it. So picture, it's a bit like Brecos power and torque. Best way of explaining it. CFM is how fast you hit the wall. PSI is how far you take the wall with you. So it's like Brecos power and torque. So Brecos power is how fast you hit that wall and torque is how far you carry that wall with you when you've crashed into it <laughs> so that's basically the same sort of principle like your cfm is your flow your psi is your pressure uh, and it's it's crucial that you match I can't, I can't stress it enough it's crucial that you match that nozzle to that set to that cfm that you've got at the end they didn't <clears throat> There ain't no real science about it. There's, there's charts all over the internet that will tell you what size nozzle you need for that CFM that you've got. And then, like, it's pointless having that three quarter inch pipe if you're only going to run 15 CFM. I tried doing it so that it were going to be a, a, a like a, a versatile pot, but it's turning out that this pot's fittings for it are going to be quite hard to try and downsize that pot to a, I don't know, a quarter inch airline. So you, you're still going to need to be able to, it, at 15 CFM, yeah, it would blast, as long as you could get a, a blast cabinet blast hose and a blast cabinet nozzle, then that's it, you're done. You, you could lower it right down, but I don't have none of that because I'm mobile and I've, I've no call for small stuff. 
yeah watch out for video two because uh, next video i'm going to be fitting fitting that air valve um control remote control so that you can control it at dead mat at nozzle side so you can turn it on and off I can also, if, if it's something that you're interested in, I can also show you how to set it up so that it's Bluetooth or, or Wi-Fi or whatever it works. I don't know how it works, but I can set it up so that you can control that with no wires. So you can control it straight from end, from blast end to your port and turn it on and off with no wires at all. But I don't recommend that because that's not a, it's not a safe way of oh, doing it. Oh, 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 that's not a safe way of doing it because if, I like the fact that if it's got a wire and it's got a manual override such as that valve's going to have a spring inside it so if there's a power shortage or there's a fault malfunction anywhere in between blast and blast port and battery if there's any sort of fault it'll shut itself down naturally closed system so you don't want it to run away with itself and carry on blasting if you're uh, you might be up scaffolding you're away from your blast port and you can't control it you can't shut it down because your battery's gone flat you want to be able to, oh, my battery's gone flat, but you're not going to know that because your machine will already know and it'll already have shut itself down. So then the only thing you've got to think is, why is it shut itself down? It's a manual system. It can't, it's it's foolproof. You can't, it's got to, it's got to work. It's, I can't see it not failing. It can't. <laughs> it's, but yeah, like I say, you can do it so you set it up. So as it's set up at the minute with a ball valve on top, you're going to need two men to operate it, but like I said, this video is knocking on a bit, so that'll be, the bloke will be stood at pot, doing pot man stuff, so he'll be watching what's happening, he'll be keeping an eye on you doing blasting, or whoever's doing blasting, pot man's controlling air, he's got it turned on, he's watching, sees the signal from blaster, turns the air off, basically the same as a remote valve, but that's that's where we're going to try and do it, where it's cheap, we'll do it like that. So yeah, next video, if you Mm, yeah click onto that one it's, it'll be dressing this machine up and we'll be painting it making it look a lot better it'll be fitting that valve uh, yeah that valve setting it up so it's got its electrics on it i don't know yeah just watch out for video too for that so we'll go from there oh yeah thanks for watching